He's sort of here, I suppose. J- Jeremy, can you hear us? <laughs> Waiting on fucking Jeremy as always. Ah, <sighs> all right. Well, we are um, now live with audio, so don't you know? Yay! Tell everyone about don't. your uh, perverse thoughts and such. So my perverse thought is. Uh... I told my list. Not to, no, don't tell them. They got to figure it out. No. God damn. No. Yeah. My list I made. I'm. I'm. I'm looking at it. It's a picture oh, yeah. of a notepad uh, <laughs> text document that I made from a list that I made on the notepad for off the notepad on my phone, which I made while I was researching the, <laughs> everything on on the computer. I mean, don't you have like dual monitors? Yeah, that's why I did this all at work. Oh, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, so this is going to be a hype episode. I'm excited for it when Jeremy finally shows his dumb ass. Shut up. Hey! hey! Oh, my God, hey! he's here. Fucking did it. Oh, maybe? I'm here. Shut up. Okay, okay. all right. All right. You good? You feeling good? You ready for this, buddy? Trying. I'm uh adjusting the mic real quick. Okay, we're only like 15 minutes late, so no biggie. You know what? For us, that's pretty fucking good. That is. Yeah, I mean good. that's like record that's time. Good. And and let's also point out, it's not us. It's it's Jeremy. That's true. That's fair. I did have everything up and running at nine o'clock, so. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad we tested everything out yesterday. It all looks like it's doing good still, too, so that's awesome. Yeah, so I guess i uh, ready whenever, right? Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we already are live, by the way, so just so you know. Oh, well, you know. Yeah, you bet you. There's that. All right, guys, finally, welcome to Sketchy Squares Podcast Episode 7, I think. Um, we figured out that we definitely don't have Episode 2, which is arguably the best episode, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so this uh, episode we're going to be discussing our picks for Game of the Decade. I'm going to go through a list of uh, each year, Game of the Year for me personally. Eddie's got his list. Jeremy's probably not ready because he never is. But uh, it's going to nope. be a good time. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeremy's prepared. <laughs> yeah, with his thumb up his ass. Anyway, uh, theme song. I, I hope it's working. I mean, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> is, it, is it really not? <laughs> it's really not. God damn it. Oh, there, there it is. is. There it is. Oh, that's, <laughs> all right. At least it showed up at all. <laughs> Yes. yes. Okay, cool. All right, I can see it on my uh, sound monitoring, so that worked out better than I Ladies and gentlemen, we're incredible professionals here. That's right, man. We've been doing this for tens of minutes. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so in case anyone was wondering, um, last podcast, I was the only one who could hear it, and then this podcast, I'm the only one who can't hear it, so it's kind of a caveat we had to make, but worth it. Worth it. So uh, I guess we can go ahead and get into the nitty gritty unless anyone has any pressing matters that they want to attend to first off. Oh. I'm going to take that as a fucking no. All right, cool. So uh, do you guys remember the year 2010? Do you remember what kind of games you played back then? I mean, you both were children still. So. Oh, fuck off. 2010? Legally an adult <laughs> asshole. Get out of here. Not mentally, mm-hmm. but legally. You're still not mentally. Very one. big different. Yeah, very big different. <laughs> I was waiting to see if you were going to catch that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah. Jer- Jeremy's vocab hasn't moved on since second grade. No, I was <laughs> It was at least third or fourth, okay? Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, they say you're supposed to read a, you're supposed to write a third grade reading level. So. I'm. Not entirely sure how that <laughs> one works, but if you insist. 
Um, uh, so yeah, the 2010s were a weird year. Um, I don't remember exactly. I think it was the PS3, uh, uh, PSP era, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, it was. Um, yeah, Sony fanboy. What? Okay, uh, the GTX uh, the five nine. I don't know. Fucking whatever. <laughs> the the what was the Wii out yet? I don't. I don't really remember. Yeah, the Wii was out. I think the Wii came out in two thousand eight. Okay. Somewhere around there. Okay, so it was like mid mid cycle. Twenty twelve for the Wii U. Sorry, I don't oh, know why okay. I just said I don't know why I, I I googled Wii and it gives me Wii U. It's like why? Because I, I guess it was arguably the superior system of the yeah, two. Yeah, dude, that's true. The Wii U was way better than the Wii. I mean, two thousand six for the Wii. Oh wow! Oh yeah. wow! Really? Oh well, no, six year. That sounds yeah, about right. I mean, right. I guess that makes sense. I mean, think about it. the Xbox 360 came out in 2005. Well, no, nobody, nobody cares about that. Get out of here. Well, I mean, they go hand in hand with the PS3. The PS3 was only later in that that year, in 2006. Uh, so yeah, but you had to pay for like online, which you know that was the kind of nice thing about PS3 is not having to. But their servers were shit, so it's kind of like a little bit of a trade off. No. Yep. Yeah. So 2010, yep. um, yeah, 2010, weird year. Uh, like I said, PSP, uh, which is actually my choice. And it was for 2010, my game of the year, I would say is Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. That's a weird fucking choice, I know. I mean, I guess with my name, it's not that weird. But I have many reasons for this. First off, that was the coolest, most game-feeling game I had ever played on, like, a handheld device, you know? Like... It had, like, good 3D graphics. You'd explore all the areas. Like, it felt like a real Kingdom Hearts game. Um, not to mention you got to play as a girl, which is not something you had to do in a lot of games, especially at that time. So that, that was pretty fucking cool. Um, and they introduced, like, the system where you had all, like, those skills and stuff that you could set up to do additional. So it really, like, built on the Kingdom Hearts formula in a really cool way that has continued to be, you know, built upon even going into Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, but that, that'd be my pick for that year. Any comments on that? Which one was birth by sleep? The, the one with the three, you got Aqua, Terra, and Ventus. And so like, which one was that? It's like way back in the past and you get the. So out. which one was that? Which one was what? No, no. What I'm trying to say is it's really hard to, they don't really all stand out. Like outside of like the original chain of memories, I don't think any of the Kingdom Hearts sequels so, really stand out. It was the second like uh, handheld one, and probably the only really really good one. Like I, I don't get me wrong, I love Chain of Memories for what it was. It was such a unique thing, but um, I mean, if you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, it stood out. Again, this is my personal list, so you can fuck right off. I thought Breath by Sleep was. <laughs> great game yeah fantastic thank you played i played through for hours like all the characters oh yeah and like to be fair to what you're saying though i think birth by sleep was probably the last one before i started feeling just like totally overdone with fucking kingdom hearts games like that was when they really just started mm -hmm. shitting them out like they made a mobile game and then they put that on the ds and they made a ds game with a, their first like god awful name like and it just kind of got even more convoluted and went to hell from there but this game provided like an actual like backstory for the main enemy of the first two games so it was like to me it, it was really important plus it talked more on the keyblade war which was always something they're like oh keyblade war keyblade war and you're like okay but i want to know about that that sounds fucking badass yeah no i agree that is really cool i'm just I don't know if I would say that was even that, that important of a game in the long running. Oh, I know, but I mean, uh, going through the 2010 list, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you really, you really, your choices are, let's see, uh, God okay. of War 3 All right, so or um, Rock Band 2. I would say and, there, there and there's a couple Wars. other ones. Uh, like my second place was the Scott Pilgrim game. That game was fucking awesome. I, didn't, I, mean, no, I totally uh, forgot about that game. That game was fun. So that good. one was a lot of fun, yeah. 
and you know they took it down you couldn't buy it for the longest time but apparently they're supposed to be bringing it back so that's gonna be cool really yeah and also uh ding and Ropa came out that year as well which that's a big one yeah very oh, niche yeah. though that's that's the main problem with that i feel like kingdom hearts is a little more approachable i don't know but i mean it, with just if you just go by the names alone it's really hard to, 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 yeah to yeah dang and rope i don't even know if i'm saying that anywhere near right but eh, whatever it's a good fucking game too so yeah that was pretty much my 2010 like three um did anyone have any specific thing they remember from 2010 that maybe they liked more or should we specifically 2010 yeah yeah yep uh, i've got one for not, you oh not here we go really Red Dead Redemption, oh, the original. I did not like the original, honestly. I almost didn't buy two because of how much I disliked the original. Wow. <laughs> but I, I don't think I, I was in that aesthetic at the time. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's, it's, it's also huge because it was the first game to really tackle that sort of setting. Like the old Wild West type deal. And kind of throw the whole GTA open world mindset in that setting so okay. now we we have a lot more examples now of more historical pieces and stuff like that but it's also it's also really well known for great storytelling it very much is like a western movie as a video game and wow. that's a huge deal and it's remembering westerns are some of the most popular movies and tv shows of all time yeah. in our and western and you know our hemispheres media and thinking about how much how much they play with the you know even just the japanese media how much westerns and jap and japanese live action shows tend to feed off of each other and speaking of it's it's funny because it actually reminds me of like this like weird symbiotic relationship that like japanese samurai movies and westerns had like where they were like constantly inspiring each other back and forth mm -hmm. i always thought that was fucking cool so I, I definitely, if I'm going to pick one game I think represents 2010 the best, that would be mine. Okay, that's fair. I could see that. I see that. I definitely was coming at more personal view, so uh, I like your more objective view. It's good. <laughs> cool. All right. So ready to move on to 2011? I will say that, um, oh, I, I will say that um, Mass Effect 2 came out that year, and that was, while I wouldn't put it at my top game of 2010, that was that was a pretty good game overall, and I do remember sp spending like at least a good eighty hours on that game. Yeah, I mean, I I played it a ton too, but I I was such a big fan of the original Mass Effect, and when two came out, and it was so much more like action force, like focused, and just like a almost a generic third person shooter. It felt like like I was not about it, so I think that's why I kind of like ignored that one for my list. That's fair. But, you know, still a good game. I'd still take that over a lot of different games. But, yeah. That's good, good, uh, good addition. All right, 2011, baby. 2011. All right, guys, what do you guys remember about 2011? Anything? Because I don't. I don't remember shit. Um, yeah, that was the year Skyrim came out. Oh, damn. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's Cause... been that long. Yeah, I Still mean... one of the top games on, like, the Switch, on the it's... PS4. Yeah, they have it on the Switch, and that's ridiculous. People are actually buying it. I don't know how good the graphics are, but they're buying it. Yeah, it's passable. I mean, honestly, the Switch is probably around the same power as, like, a PS3, I would say, if I had to guess. I'm not an expert. But, yeah, so funny story. Game of the year for me, 2011, Skyrim. Hands down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see how anybody can fight that. No, there's I, no I don't way. think anyone can. I think that was game of the year for the next, like, four or five years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, Todd How if Todd Howard has its way, it will be branded onto every child. <laughs> yeah. Have we have we heard about the uh, release for PS5 yet? I'm sure it's already done. I, I know it's coming. <laughs> it's I still... mean, I have, I have it on VR, even. And it's it's actually kind of good in yeah. VR. No, that I'd was, be uh... interested to try that. That was my first experience with the real game in VR. When obviously you were there, you showed me and had me play. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting because, like, when I first started moving with the controller, it was like this instant feeling of needing to hurl and then just gone forever. And I just haven't felt that since. So it's been like, okay, cool. I popped my cherry, I guess. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, 
we could sit here and talk about Skyrim for an hour or two. Every, anyone could. Easily. I feel like everything <laughs> that can be said about that game has been said. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, shove off on to uh, 2012 unless anyone's got some honorable mentions for that year. Yeah, I've got a couple honorable mentions. I will say that in that year, we had Portal 2, we had Dead Island, which definitely not as good as Dying Light. It was, and Dying Light is yeah. more what Dead Island should have been. Yeah, but, but I do remember start playing somewhere. that game for hours and, and laughing a lot at the voice acting and, and oh my just some God. of the weird glitches the voice that acting. came. Oh, <laughs> God, the worst voice acting I've ever. Like, they, like, purposely, I feel like, picked, like, people from not the nation they were trying to represent. Just like, oh, just do an accent from it. You're close enough. I'm sure this was a small group of people who were making the game, and they were like, oh, absolutely. hey, you want to do this voice, this voice, and this voice? Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, that sounds more realistic. But, I, you know, it's funny, and I, I was talking about this earlier today, is I feel like... Dying Light 2 is going to come out before Dead Island 2, and that's just mind-blowing. But they've been through, what, like I thought three Dead studios? Island 2 came out. It didn't come out? No, we got Riptide, and that's it. 2 never came out. They've shown us one trailer with gameplay. Or, no, one trailer and, like, a clip of gameplay. But that was, like, three studios ago, so I don't even know if it's the same game as what we saw. Um, yeah, they, they may have... Um decided to back out after seeing dying light literally do no, everything that they said still, they were going to do they're still working on it they've been oh no i'm, I'm sure they're still working on it they probably realize they have to step their game up if they want to be able to compete yeah and i mean it's weird because they're both by techland which i think is a publisher technically so i think it's two I different so. main developers but it's it's such a weird situation and from what i've been reading they're going to be taking a very different approach to the game than dying light took um i feel like they're going to be from what I saw and what I'm hearing, it seems more almost like a Borderlandsy thing, where it's much more heavy on the elemental use of weapons and guns are much more a thing. From what I saw, so we'll see how it turns out. Interesting. Yeah, and it takes place in California, so that'll be you know, like I haven't played a game in California before or something. But wait, uh, there are games that take place in California. Yeah, apparently. Like what what possible game could you possibly be talking about? Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, the video game. So there was uh, one other game that come out came out in 2011. I'm pretty sure is the official release. Eddie can. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so that that one we can save though, because I have a feeling we're gonna have a big discussion on that one. Mm-hmm. So all right. Yeah, well, that's a big one. Yeah, no joke. So on to 2012. Oh, we did forget one other ga big game from oh. 2011. Oh. oh, shit. Hold on. Oh, if let's... I'm double-checking my... Okay, we're yep, back to 2011. My release. Please, go ahead. Um, The first Dark Souls. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely something we needed on so, the list. So here's here's my problem with that, though, is Dark Souls was not the first. There's Demon Souls. So it's like, what does Dark Souls get? Like, I guess popularizing it? I can give it that much credit, but... Definitely. But I also don't feel like I give that much of a shit about that game series. So, <laughs> to be honest, I know a lot of people who would be up in arms at you just saying oh, that. Oh, I'm they sure. I, I hardcore. I worked hardcore with. Fans. I worked with this kid once, and like he seemed like somebody I'd get along with really well. And so I started talking to him, and he's just like, "Oh, dude, I'm like just so into the lore of Dark Souls. Like, I just love the lore of it." And I was like, Wait, "I, I did. There's, there's lore. There's lore, right? That was what I said. I was." I didn't know there was Lord of the game, but apparently there is. So, and he was real into it and he talked about it a lot. So interesting. Uh, yeah. I would have so, never known. So that's, that's a good mention. Um, I personally, again, don't give a fuck. Like even like the closest game to that, that I've played that I like would probably be Neo. But even that I got like four bosses in and I'm just like, I'm just, I'm tired of this game. I just, I don't, I don't, buy into that whole like oh let's just die a lot and learn over and over again and learn the levels and all the tricks and shit it just eh, the repetition gets to me and maybe i need to get good or maybe, maybe i just good. not the game for me you know <laughs> that's, that's no i understand what, that what i about? i don't particularly enjoy playing that game either no but there's it definitely had a big impact on the game it is community. a yeah it's a huge impact i mean look so. at how many different games came out like copying the formula 
I mean, even just within the last year, we have Sekiro, we have Ghosts of Tsushima. Well, Sekiro is made by the same people. That's probably the easiest game in that vein of games. And but that's the point. I actually, we, I did enjoy Sekiro. I need to play more of that. Yeah. But I, I get so. what you're Yeah, yep. for sure. Cool. So we ready to move on to 2012 now? Uh, a couple cool. more mentions. So we oh, do yeah, have Dead Space 2, Uncharted 3, oh. Assassin's Creed Revelations, and Dragon Age as all the AAA games that came out that year. There was okay. quite a bit of games that came out that year. Yeah, but none of them. Yeah, but all sequels. Those were all sequels. Yeah, it's all sequels. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, nothing, nothing like, the bad, like the bad sequels of them. Oh, yeah. and... Uh, of course, there's there's a uh, Skyward Sword, so not oh not get by far. get that one get of, that one of the it. worst get Zelda you. games that I've played. I hated the mechanic on that game so much. I spent you know, more time fighting with the mechanics than fighting with the enemies. You know, it, yeah. it's 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 kind of sad because that's like my second favorite Zelda game, like Link to the Past <laughs> being the only one above it. <laughs> but I'm not a Zelda <laughs> man. I'm barely a Nintendo man, so. I don't. I don't even know if I have any Nintendo games on my list. To be honest, whoops. <laughs> that makes a statement about you, don't it? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Well, I mean, we didn't really like after the Super Nintendo. I our family never really had like Nintendo systems. Mm-hmm. You know, like and see, and I think that that very easily skews your your game selection choices. Oh, uh, okay. Based on what this they is have. this is why I'm, I put I'm the not disclaimer. Gonna say, talk shit. Like twelve I'm times that this is my personal taste, so you know. <laughs> no, no, I know, it's, but it, I, I'm saying it, I think it's interesting because, like, because of that, you were forced to play more games, and maybe you played more Sony games than I did because I had access to both. Mm, so I was true. able to kind of pick and choose the the games that I really wanted versus being like, well, I guess I'll try this. I've I have no idea what it is, but sure. Yeah, actually, I lied. Ocarina would be number two. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that that wasn't on the list. I mean, like uh, everyone's played Ocarina. That game. If you played. Zelda games, and if I you haven't, you probably should. The first time I played that, I went over to my buddy's house who had an N64, and he fired it up, and I was just blown away by this open world, this cool graphics. You got a fucking horse, like yeah, this badass sword. I was like, "What is this? This is not the Zelda I know. This is awesome." But I never really got to, you know, play it all the way through on my own until I think the 3DS uh, version came out. So. But still, solid game, and fuck Majora's Mask. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. We, we're we're gonna go on to 2012 here, um, because we could talk a lot. I guess 2011 was a popping year. Yeah, I mean, really, the first like half of the decade was really popping. I feel like later on it yeah. kind of died out as I was doing it my research. It definitely slowed down. But you know, the bigger budget games, more work put into it, I guess, or something. I, I yeah, so you have less, you got either crazy indie hits or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we're still pre-indie bubble, too, so. Yeah. Um, like, early days. So, 2012. 2012 was an interesting year. Um, I really tried to stray away from sequels, but I feel like this sequel is, one, underrated, two, way outmatched the original one, and three, fuck you if you don't like this game. But Final Fantasy XIII, too. God damn it, I fucking love that game. That was the first Platinum I got on PS3. And, like, dude, just hands down, one of my favorite games of all time. I feel like they really hit the peak of the ATB system in that game. And it's just been kind of downhill since then for me, <laughs> to be honest. So that's that's where i'm going oh plus you got to play as sarah and sarah's like the best character in this the like game series and i feel like 13 2 is a lot easier to follow story wise than like the original 13 so i think was that it was it though big... I mean, oh god like, yeah jump... 13 2 made way more sense in time there's all sorts of weird paradox shit so yeah they leave kinda... and that's that's my point is you get all that weird shit and it still was way better than 13 story which 13 story the cutscenes were like haha generic hero dialogue and then it's like okay now you got to read the the dialogue or the what the fuck they call it the primer and it's like the lassie oh, is the sea and the say and the lassie and this and i'm like i don't know what any of these fucking made up words mean and none of that shit really mattered in 13 too it, it was like okay here's a story it's in it's right here you don't have to dig to try and understand it yeah, it may be still kind of a little convoluted, but it's a fantasy thing. It's going to be, like, especially when you start working in wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey shit. So it's – I thought and, it was fantastic. I, to, to be fair, I, I also very thoroughly enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the first one too, but I yeah, definitely say that both games had, the, had their merits, and they were both very fun, and For sure. either are superior to the third. 
Yeah, nah, it's the third was too much Majora's Masky bullshit for me. I'm like, I have <laughs> to play the game from start to beginning three times to even experience everything. That's kind of lame, honestly. Like, like I, I appreciate it well. a new game plus, but being forced into it just doesn't feel right to me. And I don't do well with timers. I don't do well with those. Me either. Ugh. So, Eddie, what, what did you have for 2012? Oh, I, I have a bunch. There's a bunch of sequels that came out this year that I think are really notable. This is like one of the best sequel year. And all these sequels are probably the best games from that series. Eh, arguably for one of, one of them. But um, Borderlands 2. Oh, it's true. Yeah. That Phenomenal was... game. Yep. Definitely I mean, it, it's a huge high end game. Borderlands 1 being one of the biggest breakout of nowhere <laughs> games all time. And then 2 being the best thing you could expect out of a sequel. For oh that. yeah. Honestly, like, I agree with that. For that's sure. part of the reason I was really let down with borderlands three, because I didn't feel like it was that same step up that you got from one to two, like at all. We kind of felt that was going to happen after yeah. pre-sequel. Yeah. Uh... Pre-sequel <laughs> felt like a kind of like a step sideways that went slightly diagonally. Back, oh, it's, it's, then... it was a two K cash in. It's kind of what Bioshock two yeah. was, but Bioshock two happened to stick with, bioshock one systems and improve them and add some yeah. cool shit so that ended up being a fantastic game despite the story being like whatever yeah yeah plus then the multiplayer was pretty fun for a little while yeah that was cool even though it was hard to get a fucking game when we got into it <laughs> it right. was like 10 other people in the whole world <laughs> oh playing God. it oh that's so sad <laughs> but i mean that i feel like that was probably the time where everything had to have a multiplayer or didn't sell or yeah. something and that yeah i mean sad. it was weird it was very land ish um another one that i think is actually incredibly formative is far cry 3 oh yeah i forgot that, was that on was, my list too that that actually got edged out by a couple other games that i'll talk about but yeah that was up there too because three three oh fantastic game i didn't like far cry at all before i played that and then i haven't liked a far cry nearly as much since yeah, it's very much the pinnacle of that whole open world crafting and killing and taking over bases and doing this sort of thing. Like Ubisoft had been doing a lot of that with the original Assassin Creed, mm -hmm. like especially starting with Assassin's Creed 2. Right. But, you know, Far Cry 3 is where they really kind of like finally got it perfectly tweaked. Right. And then from there on out, they just got ridiculous. Yeah, they've just and, kind of taken the three formula and just tacked on things as they went. And it's been, but it's also had a huge impact. This is a very common mechanic in just games in general now. Yep. Like generic ass, slap a property, throw open world. To be honest, Breath of the Wild pretty much belongs in that category. Yep. So, so that's where yeah. this all progenates from is going all the way back to that. Uh, well, so. I mean, even Far Cry 2 was very much like that, but it was much oh, yeah. less handholdy, and I think yeah, that may have been a little less approachable because of that. But it's a fun game. Yeah. I enjoyed my time with Far Cry 2. Yeah, I've played quite a bit. I played a bit of Far Cry 2 before I Far Cry 3 was even announced, and, and oh hey, uh, so yeah. mine mine was post three. I finally went back oh, and no. played it. And my yeah. only real yeah, experience me, was, was the the what was the one on fucking Wii. That was just like the worst graphics I'd ever seen in my life. God, I don't even remember. <laughs> oh. It was like, a Far Cry on the Wii. Yeah, yeah. The, it was there was a cool factor though, because you got like powers that were like similar to like animals, like you could do weird animally things, and I've never seen them do powers like that since. It's mostly just oh, like, oh you shoot Far Cry you Vengeance. Better. Vengeance, that's what it was. Yeah. Vengeance, yeah. But oh god, it looked god awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. we couldn't do shit <laughs> no but so. nah, unless it was a nintendo game so but yeah uh i and... did want to say the all the very first indie game that i enjoyed that really like shook up my idea of what indie games were came out that year and that was fez fez was fucking mm. rad and honestly i i think it's like kind of touted as the one of the big like first break open yeah. indie things and yeah it's when we first started talking about it yeah um and god i enjoyed that game just just the puzzling aspects and being able to, uh, just uh, it's so good like I, I don't even know how to express how good that game was <laughs> but um other than that also gravity rush came out that year which gravity rush is a really fucking cool game like playing around with the gravity effect and all that and i'm 
I mean, even Gravity Rush 2 feel, still feels a little, I almost want to say mobily in a way. Granted, at the time, you know, well, I mean, you don't know what mobile is. Yeah. And <laughs> and to be fair, Gravity Rush was originally PS Vita, so it literally was a yeah. mobile game more or less. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another big indie game from that year, 2012, is Journey. Oh, fuck Ooh, Journey. About Journey. Fuck Journey. And, and I know a lot of people who feel that same way. They just do just, that. Is there other people? Good. There is a lot of people who, who hate Journey. And then there's a lot of people that think it's the most profound thing ever. It's, it's stupid. amusing. It's, <laughs> it's stupid. amusing listening to this. So look, this is my description. It was pretty, of but that's about it. Look, it was fucking cell shaded prettiness, which is fucking cheap ass bullshit. And like, okay, go play your Nintendo games, losers. And there was nothing in the game. You just fucking go around and you maybe collect these things, but you don't really need to. It's fine. Just look at this, like, I guess, pretty scenery. I don't know. I just, it, I felt like I wasted my time playing that game, honestly. It was, there was a lot of it. It was supposed to be an artistic thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is context. It's remembering that, you know, at that time, multiplayer was around obviously but it wasn't the same and when you're playing journey you're supposed to be playing it online with a bunch of other people yeah but you don't really and do anything you're just like oh look there's another guy floating around too all right and there, oh, what it is is there's a hook there's actually some platforming stuff and some other things into it which if you but, know anything about me i'm fucking awful at platforming so that may and that, have had... that that may have had also a hand to do with why you didn't like it because you just... <laughs> Should have heard him the other day. Oh, God. So, yeah, I've been playing Super Mario Sunshine, and I've gotten way further than I've ever gotten, but fuck, man. Oh, that camera and fucking, you got to jump like an hour before you think you have to jump, or you're just going to die a lot. And yeah. Oh, my God. I Big love game. watching speedruns of that game. <laughs> oh, my God. People speedrun. Oh, of course they do. Oh, uh, they like, speedrun yeah, everything. They, they speedrun oh. li- literally everything. That You must be like some kind of like true fucking like masochist to speedrun Sunshine. I. Oh, no, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Fun game. Beautiful game. It still looks great even today. Like, I honestly, there's parts of that game that I'm like, I could see this being a brand new game on Switch, honestly. But. Yeah. With better mechanics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The camera. <laughs> the camera is the biggest thing that bothers me because it wouldn't go through buildings. So you could get into these precarious spots where you just you. it's impossible to see anything. Like there's two walls on one side. And if you like get out from looking in between those walls, you can't get back up in there. It won't let you ever. So I'm like, I can't even see where I'm at. Like, what am I doing? The fuck? So dumb shit like that. I don't know. <laughs> that that's... I do have a game for that year though. Oh yeah, go on, go on. So so during that year, uh, 2012, we we did have uh, the first of the Walking Dead Telltale games, and those games mm. definitely uh, reinvented that whole kind of storyline. Um, they inspired obviously like the Borderlands and a couple of other games like that uh, over the next couple of years. Well, it was made by I... the same people, so. Well, yeah, there was but, but yeah. there was a couple other ones that came out. No, I mean, I agree. It it definitely brought, like, the the point-and-click adventure style, like, back to the mainstream. I mean, a little less the same thing, more, much more cutscene story heavy. But, yeah, it was, it it really did start kind of a whole revolution of different, like, a different genre almost. I would actually argue that that one is not the one that brought into the mainstream. And I'll get to that one later when it's actually an earlier game. That was a big one. Yeah, yeah wasn't a telltale but you know even this one was actually very much identical to that whole telltale setup but it was a little bit earlier and was just as big oh i think i know which one you're talking about actually i would if it's the same one i you might i could agree that it was as big but i don't think it was as good yeah no i could see that that's personal taste yeah and i'm going for different things but we'll get to that when we get to that if you I mean, I'm not sure why we're yeah. not doing it now, but <laughs> <laughs> that one's from 2010. But I, forget, oh, so, I didn't write down. So I didn't write down what you. I didn't write down what years I did any of these, because that's on my lit, my top ten list. So go ahead and tell me what it is then. If we're already past the year, fuck it. Let's oh yeah, it out. it's heavy rain. Yeah, it was heavy. Okay, that's what yeah, I thought. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Fuck I still, the controls in that game. I still think that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. 
But uh, Heavy Rain yeah. actually outselled the Telltale. The I first believe it. I, so Heavy Rain's a much more like wide range type thing. I feel mm-hmm. like. Granted, it's more like detective heavy and shit, but it's still like, if you don't like zombies, you're not going to be into The Walking Dead. Like, there's not yeah. a, a, a mainstream main appeal. Yeah. 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 So I, I see where you're coming from with that, but um, but I definitely think like that's what brought it to start coming back. But I think with The Walking Dead, it really honed in and like made it much thicker of a genre. Yeah. And I think that one came from Wolf Among Us. Which was which was also an early progenitor of that. And that's a telltale, I believe. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, but I, I think so. that came out after. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to double check. I'm pretty sure that came out after uh, Walking Dead. Pretty sure, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, by the way, Fez actually came out in 2013. Hmm. Mm, that's hmm. not true. I'm looking here on the wiki. Oh, yeah, it was, on three, it was on 360 in 2012. There you go. That's the key. Yeah, I had to look real close at some of them because I'm like, but wait, oh, this was released on this system that year. Yeah, no. So the original yeah, it's was so weird with that. exclusives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you you kind of feel where I was coming from. Cool. All right. So we can move on to 2013 now. 2012 was a pretty pretty interesting year for sure. Uh, yeah, there there was uh, two other things that I did see that I, I wasn't particularly crazy about either of these games, but they were fairly popular and had a bit of appeal. Oh, yeah, which um, ones? So Mass Effect 3 came out in 2012, oh my as God. did Halo 4 and uh, Dishonored, which yeah. was very popular. I wasn't uh, super into the Dishonored. Like, I was really into it before it came out because it reminded me of a certain game, but then it wasn't that game, and I was like, why am I playing this? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. which actually brings me to my pick for 2013, and that is Bioshock exactly. Infinite. Yeah, you saw you that coming. That exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> I, but you I knew mean, knew where that was going. <laughs> you're going to tell me that's not your pick for 2013, too? Absolutely not. You bitch. Absolutely was... not. Hold on, let me look at my quick, list. Man. See if there's a reason yeah. why. Nope, I don't see a reason why. I, I, I would be interested to hear. You Who ready? You pick. Go. GTA Five. No. No. Oh no no. No. You're telling me one of the greatest nope. selling video games of all time. Greatest selling? That doesn't mean it's a good game. Well, it is a good game, but it ain't Which no is... Infinite. The story was <laughs> like, nothing wait, compared to Infinite. Nothing. But also having a bigger impact than Infinite has. Infinite just basically okay, yeah. stopped the bioshock series you're you're very right about that and i think despite my love for the game i do bitch a lot about how i feel like the gameplay really suffered in that that they made it just yeah. a generic shooter and took out all the real fun parts of the original yeah but so, the story is G- fantastic fantastic story so, i even played oh, yeah. it again recently and still thought it was great oh no it's a great story yeah I don't think GTA 5 is a bad story either. No, I think it's, what, it's probably bad. one of the best stories of, of the GTA series. Oh, it absolutely is. I would definitely go to bat saying that. But put against Infinite for me, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do sure. it. I will also say this. Like Skyrim, it's yeah. going to be on PS3, PS4, oh, yeah. Yeah. and PS5. Yeah, and I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I just... I feel weird about putting that up there. It just feels weird to me. Um, yeah, it, it's. I, know. I think part of it is because, one, it was a sequel, which, yes, I know Infinite's a sequel. But I also feel like it didn't really do anything that crazy new to kind of make up for. Like, I, I don't know. It's it's a hard hard argument for me there. But I, I, I stick to my Infinite. I, 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 I lean very much on the lasting, long-lasting power. Yeah. This is a game that's still around and is still relevant. Now, part of that is for something that is only partially GTA Five responsible. <laughs> yeah. With GTA Line Online, it's kind of its own thing in the GTA Five world. Right. But yeah, it's it just makes a statement that they just kept going with it. Yeah. No, oh, and they're still running online strong, so... Oh, it's it's still huge, yeah. Yeah, still adding new stuff constantly, doing events and stuff. I pop in there once every once in a while and go, oh, yeah, I don't really do that much in here because, eh. It's, it's definitely something more fun with friends. I mean, it's online, that's the whole point. But, like, even then, it's just like, ah, I just, ah I'm not a multiplayer guy. You know that. Um, yeah. 
I did want to mention though, it actually didn't even make it into my top three picks. Um, number two being State of Decay, because it was such a unique like take on like the zombie game, and you know, it like, was it was a definitely a different take. <laughs> I mean, it was a rough game. I will always admit to that, but it was it was such a cool new thing for me, and it was kind of more of what I've always wanted out of a zombie game the the whole survival aspect, and you know, leading a group of people and you know permadeath like if you fuck up when you're running around as a character and you die that's it that guy's dead you gotta go grab his shit and hope you can train up another person to make up for that in time to you know deal with a horde coming or try to continue the story and I actually got around to playing the second game and they just really built upon it very well I highly recommend that game Um, and then third was dragon's crown because I've had hours of playing with friends in that game, just hours (laughs) upon hours. So fun. And any vanilla wear game is just fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. No, (laughs) but so that's kind of where I stand. So of course the, the other games to mention are one that probably none of us is that big of a fan of, and that's the last of us. Oh, eh. it's just on my list to mention. It was, it was definitely, I, I, honestly, I think I liked Uncharted a little bit better uh, in terms of, like, story. Yeah. The, the, the story was, it wasn't bad, but the, the mechanics always felt kind of limiting. Um, there was just a couple of parts that were a little, a little glitchy, and... Um, I feel like the survival elements were not like up to snuff with what we knew as survival and really didn't add yeah. the layer to the game that they were hoping would. I can agree with that, yeah. That's, you know, it's fine. The, everyone like raves about the story, but I found it to be exceptionally generic for a zombie tale. And also, why why did they rip off Ellen Page's like look for that game like <laughs> whose idea so, was that and who oh my god. shut that down oh my god all the lawsuits I, they, there were so much so many things going on because of that and i just, it's just so funny i just get so sick of ellen page's face i'm just done with it after inception i'm just like i'm over it i don't want to see her again <laughs> please I'm going to make you watch old Trailer Park Boys shows now. Okay, look, she she was legit in Trailer Park Boys, though. I that, know. <laughs> that I can forgive, but she was young as shit in that. Yeah, because that show's been on for 30 years. <laughs> it has really and has it really been that long? Not not 30 years. No, but, yeah. but it's about half that or so, I would say. Yeah, like, Ellen Page was like 15, 16, and yeah. she's uh, my age. So. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> And that was a right. couple of seasons in too, when they had her too. So yeah, they were a couple of seasons in. Yeah. That's a fucking good show, fucking great show. But we're not here to talk about shows. No, no, we're here to talk about games. We're still looking at 2013 here. So any any other uh, things we need to say? Yeah, well, uh, I and and I know. Yes, I keep bringing them up, but they are noteworthy games in general. No, that's cool. You can you didn't prepare with you, your, you your were, list, so I'll take the noteworthies from you. That works for me. The Legend of Zelda: The Link Between Worlds. Oh, was that the um, the like the the Link to the P, Past uh, no. kind of remake that like yes. Oh, yes, that game was. was fantastic. All right, that, it was. That's up there too. All right, Skyward Sword and, is just um, falling the more and more we talk about them. I'm telling you, that was easily <laughs> one of the most frustrating games. Like, it wasn't, like, it, they had some interesting concepts, and it was cool when they were like, oh, hey, guess what? Yeah, now you can move, and you swing the sword, and and it'll do the thing you're doing. But it's like, it never really worked. Yeah, that's fair. That said, the Mega64 has the whole video, like, for that, really, like, outlining sure that point. Do. So, Yeah. <laughs> Man, I uh, another game soon. that was out that year, Tomb Raider, the reboot of the Tomb Raider series, oh, yeah. started that year. That's right. That did end up on my list of things to sort through, but not in my top three by the end of it. But that, yeah, that was a fantastic game. I, I remember that game. I realized it was that long, long ago, <laughs> right? I know, right? I remember it being extremely hard for me, but me still sticking my way all the way through it. That was like the first game in a while that proved to be difficult for me that I just said fuck it and powered through um but yeah it's gorgeous so worth game a lot of fun um I, it did the thing especially because we were in that time period where they're really starting everything was open world and shit like it was really getting to that point that i was oh, just yeah. done with it and these are more like 
open sections and i think it definitely benefited from doing it that way yeah but that's that was an awesome game good good mention and um i feel like there was one more oh um so and we've kind of already talked about these games assassin's creed 4 came out that year black flag oh fuck that game <laughs> i never for whatever sailing. reason everyone everyone loved it like everyone i talked to loved that game and i i'm gonna be honest i never played it i i was so disappointed in three after spending so much time and so much just effort it was buggy as shit yeah. the, the game was just a rinse and repeat of of the last like two three games yeah there was like maybe I one thought, or two well, small so, mechanic increases but so here's the thing though if you didn't consider brotherhood and revelations i think it was honestly it was a good step up from two i felt like but i mean yeah but i mean i played brotherhood and revelations and all those too so so i kind of fucked you up just was kind of disappointing yeah i'm i'm with you i mean three was just one of the most disappointing games four kind of did everything better than three no, which didn't. is why it was garbage you just go out to a but, bunch of islands marijuana island but that's cares? but that's the problem because i think three was one of the worst games i'd ever played wow yeah that bad. I, mean, I guess i guess when you play three and it feels like almost anything could be a step up from that that's wow. where i think it is because three I was especially by comparison to brotherhood or revelations it was just kind of like Oh, this is garbage. I didn't realize Man, we had such differing opinions, dude. I, I honestly <laughs> really enjoyed 3, personally. And it didn't hurt that I hated the storyline in 3. Oh, I hated every character. Oh, that's good fair. and bad guys. That's every fair. single character. And they such bullshit ways of putting... Like, literally having... There was one point where, where, where uh, uh, Connor is standing there with talking to George Washington and you see the big bad evil guy just standing in the background just glaring and huffing and puffing and he's just standing there it's like where do you know you're the evil guy and he's just like I'm here and I'm angry and it's like what all right fair enough <laughs> and he's just and they're just in a room standing there with George Washington and he's just her and he's in the background <laughs> he's Fucking like not weird. even part of the conversation he's just there being being me Grr. <laughs> Grr indeed. Oh, man. yeah man not even that cool. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> cool. So we got anything else for 2013? No, it was a good freaking year. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot. I, I do remember 2013 was one of the harder years for me to sort through. But yeah. I, I kind of, once yeah. I saw Infinite, I was like, that's going to be it. I already have a few. I mean, we all knew that that was what your take was going to be for Oh, that yeah, year. 100%. Yeah, yeah, no, no, nobody. You know nobody how I love there, there was no, no doubt. And it's, no doubt it's so funny, my love for Bioshock, because I remember hating it, the original game, the first four times I played it, because I could not get more than five minutes in because I was too fucking scared. And then one day, I just finally sucked it up and got through it. Absolutely fell in love with it. But... You know, the past, the past. 2014, baby. 2014. I, I do have a couple oh, of quick of a... mentions for okay. 2013. Let's do it. Let's oh, my so, God. Uh, there were a couple couples. other small games. Rayman Legends came out uh, that year, as did Super Mario World, uh, Super Mario 3D World, rather. And uh, another indie game that was very popular. I never played it, but Stanley Parable. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I was like, oh, you, you weren't, you lost me for the first two there, but by Stanley Parable, I can, I can get They're behind. just there. The other ones are just kind of there. Yeah. That's yeah, how that, I felt. I think 3D the, World was probably the worst main, like, like fucking. Mario I didn't play game. much of it, but Cause that was it the, was definitely one of those ones that seemed to sell systems when they, was, at a time when they definitely needed to sell systems. Yeah. Because the Wii U was such a, but that was the problem is that was our 3D Mario game for that generation. And, it just did yeah. not live up to any of the ones before or after. Like, I yeah, still... it's, it's no Sunshine, it's no 64. Definitely no uh, Odyssey. Arguably Odyssey and, and um, even even Galaxy would have been yeah. a step up. From... Galaxy was better by a long shot. By a long shot. It, it just had more like depth to it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was a fun game to play with friends, but it wasn't something that I would necessarily ever want to play by myself. Yeah, and and it was one of those things like how many people really had the game and were able to play with you online or 
if you had enough controllers and enough people who actually wanted to sit down and play for well, a while yeah and to i mean get multiple people to play it was it was definitely more of a couch co-op thing i don't even know if it had online play so i can't really speak of that okay. i don't i don't think so but i never i don't know the wii u was like i had three games on that system it was smash brothers that game and fatal frame so like That's outside fair. i that, didn't even own a wii u i, I had a wii and i waited nothing. until the switch you were smart <laughs> you missed nothing <laughs> Because, I mean, all the good Wii U games came out on Switch in better quality with more stuff. So I was like, why did I even bother with the Wii U? It's like a $300 paperweight or more. Well, uh, you and all the other suckers who went for it kept the uh, Nintendo alive until yeah. the Switch, which is arguably a, a far superior system than I mean, any of the last two Not that they needed it, but yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Wii U definitely was very much a prototype of the Switch. And, like, I really liked the concept of it. That's always how I felt with the newer, like, hardware with Wii or with Nintendo in general. It's, like, I really like the hardware and the ideas, but sometimes I feel like they fall flat on what matters, and that's the actual games. So, but Switch has definitely been much better than Wii U. Um, but I can't say... I can't say it's been better than like N64 GameCube, you know, those, we got so many great games for both of those systems that it just feels weird. I, I can agree. I, I, honestly, I'd say up until the switch, which has had some pretty solid games on it. Um, which are I, I would say, honestly, the, the GameCube or the N64 would out of all the consoles that Nintendo's made still kind of be up in my top out of, out of all Nintendo consoles, top two for sure would be, the n64 and the gamecube i wasn't i had a super nintendo i played on the nes they i mean they they definitely had their merits and obviously back then if we didn't have them we wouldn't be where we are today bro but... that, that was my fucking childhood bro like straight up i was gonna say you were both very young when uh when we when we moved on from the nes <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i remember we're still playing, playing a little bit of Duck Hunt, some yeah. original Mario. So much yeah, we Mario. got our Mario's and Zelda's. SNES, I think, when you were three, three Sora, something yeah. like three, three or four, uh, yeah. somewhere around there. Right? So that tells you anything. Yeah, yeah I still played yeah. the shit out of both. Yeah, of them. I played a lot of SNES. Yeah. Cool. So 2014, we good now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So 2014. Uh, don't remember much about the year. Let me. Look at my little list here. Okay. Oh, yeah, dude. This this was a really, really, really hard year for me. Uh, my top two, I'm still not 100% sure, but I've already got the image for what I picked. So I might just have to go with it. Um, 2014 would be South Park, the Stick of Truth. Uh, that not oh, yeah. only was it yeah. a fantastic that RPG, worked, yeah. but god damn, it was like... It was like watching more South Park and like the good South Park. So it was like uh, and all the little Easter eggs throughout it. Uh, the RPG systems are fantastic. Like I wasn't expecting a whole lot from Ubisoft, but man, I, th I think getting together with Matt Stone and Trey Parker, they fucking nailed it. Absolutely nailed it with this game. Um, that was competing against what is arguably one of my favorite games ever and Definitely my favorite indie game, and that's Transistor, also came out that year. Um, but I did kind of fall into, like Eddie does, the kind of more impact that it had, and I feel like Transistor was kind of slept on a little too much. But it, it, it is kind of a niche kind of thing, where South Park, I mean, who didn't watch South Park growing up despite them not being allowed to, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh yeah, adults, yeah. that's who. They watched it and were fine, so... So what what thoughts comments on that? Nothing. Here, I'm just like looking at the games that were out. There's not a lot of good stuff that was like new. Yeah, like that's... South Park was great. It was unique and had a very different take. But I'm I'm honestly like... surprised you guys aren't saying anything about this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Uh, oh, that's Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. Oh fuck off. That that game's that only lying. it's it was a fucking same old Ubisoft wash thing with just one little system. Granted that system was really cool in concept, but honestly when it played out it was like after about like ten dudes, you're just like, Oh, okay, it's just gonna keep filling. I I don't know. Like it was a cool either, game. Either I'm going to kill off the guy 
die permanently, or or maybe maybe I'll see him again later. Yeah, he'll come back with some scars. Like I mean, it, was, it was a cool concept. Immune to something that I did last time. Yeah, it was a really cool concept that I feel they way blew out of proportion before the game came out, though. Like, they blew, oh, man, the Nemesis system. Oh, just wait till you see the Nemesis system. And then it was like, oh, that's like one one hundredth of the game. So, like, everything else is just generic bullshit. And honestly, mm-hmm. I... I like Lord of the Rings, don't get me wrong. Maybe if I was more of a diehard fan, it would have spoke more to me, but... Alright, I, I feel like I've been a little mean to the game. It was a good game, but... I don't know. It didn't really stand out for me in the crowd. Speaking of games that were, were kind of disappointing, they they made you think it was one thing, and then, then it came out, and you were like, wait, really? Destiny. Oh yeah, was that that Destiny year? Destiny came out this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was that was the year, and I was so hyped for this game. Reading everything that's as they were releasing it and talking about it at E3 and everything, and then it came out, and I, I enjoyed it for the first couple of weeks. Then yeah. I beat it and was like, wait, it's been a few weeks, and. It took you I a couple just weeks to beat that game? Part over and over again? It took me two days to beat that game. I was also <laughs> working. I was also I was working, working too! And, doing and it still things. took me two days! <laughs> that game was so short. There was, like, no content. So short. And then they're like, you want more content? Well, here's, like, another four hours for, you know, 40 bucks. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. No. Uh, but the sad part for me was i spent the whole hundred dollars to get the game and the season pass and all that shit and i got burned i did not play any more destiny or pay for any of their add-ons i actually i have destiny 2 only because sony gave it to us for free with their playstation plus well no actually i probably would never have played the game actually they was it just they just made they it free to free? play across like, the board yeah uh, <laughs> well, yeah so we i thought mean, it was like it kind of burned everybody so you, you yeah. know and they were trying to bring more people in to bring more life to the game probably as they were you know going to release the new add-ons which i've heard a lot of good things about destiny 2's add-ons um i just every time i've tried to play that game it's been with somebody like, and they're it's not bad they're fun but it's just like I we get it helps like, when you have good internet and you're not getting disconnected every five, five minutes, you know. Yeah, it helps if I can finish talking too, asshole. Christ, nah. piece of shit. You don't need. But every time I've gone to play that game, it's like it's somebody who already knows the game well, so they're running around doing things, and I'm like, I'm not experiencing this. I'm just being uh, your bitch boy, and you're ten levels above me, so this isn't even fun. So I kind of dipped out on that game at that point. I will agree agree with you on that for sure wow we are dropping frames oh. hard okay that's yeah it. i noticed that's yeah, it's this time of night <sighs> fuck but. spectrum anyway yeah so <laughs> we can uh kind of power through the rest of them well we have yeah, been at about an hour now Smash so. brothers you came out and which that's about it you know yeah it's pretty cool so that was yeah. what 2014 yeah, uh, let's go ahead and move on. 2015, Dying Light, hands down, hands down, it's fucking Dying Light. I, I have no uh, no arguments. There's nothing for that. That was easily that. The, my top for that year too. So, and um, my second would have been Ori in the Blind Forest. Fucking awesome game, absolutely gorgeous. All the hand drawn art and everything, like oh, really cool. And then Fallout Four definitely would a special mention yeah. because all four. Big one, yeah. Yeah, love that game. Um, so this, this year, I think my favorite game was Witcher 3. Fuck I just that. enjoyed it a lot. It so I give I you the it. story was great. I just, I hate the gameplay. I hate it. It just feels like a slog to play it. I just did not enjoy that. It's, yeah, it's like a slower Assassin's Creed. <laughs> it's very much that that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, and they're very like heavy on I also want to potions and shit and i was like i'm not about it yeah but so i got yeah it's very it's very prep it's it's it remind actually it does remind me of monster hunter in a lot of ways a lot of ways it's a lot like monster hunter yeah and i never was really into the monster hunter series until world and even that i end up dropping after a while but i played it for a good like 20 30 hours so yeah and that's about how long i played witcher 3 as well (laughs) 
but i mean like the story is really good in it and that was the thing that killed me the most about it is like i was really just enjoying the story parts i should just watch it like on youtube or something interestingly enough another game that came out that probably is not going to be anybody's favorite but it needs to be mentioned is undertale never played it i know it was it was very big but i just i don't know it's unique i know it's very very popular with youngsters oh i know i remember when i was working (laughs) at a certain music store they would come in and play like one of the songs from it all the time and it's like five notes and it would just drive me nuts yeah, you knew exactly which one I was talking about. Yep. Yep. Um, also, Rocket League came out that year. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Very I don't popular. know. Yeah, no, for sure. I just, Very that game popular. made me way too tense. Way too tense. Yeah. Oh, I'm garbage. I never got, got the chance to play it. Oh, I'm garbage. I missed it when it came out for free, unfortunately. I think it's yep. free again now, actually. Is it? Oh, well, shit. I mean, I might download it just to try it yeah i'm just garbage at playing it so i can't say anything <laughs> i was okay but you know i just don't enjoy that style of game garbage. man this is just getting worse so, fuck spectrum yeah it's definitely getting worse um I'll, I'll just go ahead and say a couple honorable mentions that i did see that again not really my thing but they were pretty popular uh metal gear solid 5 phantom pain came out that year pretty good game. and uh I, I heard mixed things on it, but... It, if you were a true Metal Gear nice. fan, not so much from what I'm hearing, but I was like, I, I enjoyed it. You had a, like, a playground with all the Metal Gear stuff, so that was kind of cool. Okay. It's a, good to get a different person's perspective because, you know, you, you hear the drastic one side or the other uh, on the internet most of the time. Right. Um, I will say uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider came out that year. As did awesome Tales sequel. from the Borderlands. Yeah, this is cool stuff. Yep. More of that. We ready for 2016 and, then? Um, I'm trying to rapid yeah, fire through this shit. That's about it, yeah. Let's right. do it. 2016, baby. Uh, honestly, this was a hard year to pick one because it was kind of an okay year. But I, I kind of went with Eddie's brain on this one. Uh, Pokemon Go would be my pick. Um hugely influential yeah for like two months and I, I can definitely see that not existent yeah. the two three months yeah the two three months all of us were playing it <laughs> yeah it was cool Just, yeah a lot wandering of around wandering around parks with 80 other people yep. you know? <laughs> yeah until the police decided that they didn't like it because us walking around meant crime could possibly go up because you're well, making yourself a target so it's your fault well, also, a lot of well, people the, were jumping into people. other people's, like, yards and, like, going places they shouldn't I be. I think so, that was overblown. I mean, I think that. there's no way we could know, you but... Didn't, you didn't need to jump in anybody's yard. The, re- the, 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 the range for to play yes. was, like, but would that mile. yeah But would that stop? No, you had to be pretty close, honestly, especially in the early yeah. days. At the, at the beginning, it was a, a bit... Of a, uh, of a pain in the butt with that i'll give him that and um there was also another issue that you know once they started cracking down on that people started going away and that was the fact that at the beginning you could play while you were in a car meaning yep. there was people who were literally driving around trying to find pokemon and getting into accidents getting yeah. pulled over have, things like that i have no idea it. what you are talking about i mm-hmm. never would do that i'm sort of sure thing. Mm-hmm. nope mm-hmm. nope I didn't get get a car pulled together and four of us go and drive up and down beside I doing that. No, certainly I did I not hand my phone to my brother and have him do all that while I was driving around. Well, never. that's reasonable. Never do that. We can respect that. Yeah. that. That's at least thinking. Yeah. But so yeah, other yeah. games that came <laughs> out. Um, this one was kind of a flop at first and has become really big. Uh, no Man's Sky, definitely high on my list for mm-hmm. the time that I've spent yeah. in it. Um, yeah, it definitely. It definitely got better over the years, for sure. A lot. Um, and an odd one in a uh, multiplayer game, Overwatch. Overwatch is in my yeah. top three. Is that Honestly. the year Overwatch came out? Overwatch Damn, that definitely should have been yeah. towards the top of the list for a lot yeah. of reasons. I'm oh, yeah. surprised uh, you didn't mention uh, Persona 5 coming out there. Persona 5 was kind of lame compared to even 4 and 3. Wow. Like, I haven't even beat it. Wow. I Like... 
don't get me wrong, very stylish, cool game. Like I really like some aspects about it, but the story and the characters were just like the characters are so generic. I don't have any attachment to any of them. Like I don't have a bay in this game. Like and would seem like she'd be mine, but I just I not interesting. She's so just bland and they all just yeah, feel you, like bland. You'd, you'd be into it. I don't know. I was very disappointed with that game. I, I still think three is the best one they've done by far. I think Persona is like one of those series that the first game you've played in it is the one that's your favorite. That's fair. That, that's fair. That but I still feel like fun. the story in three was just so much darker and more serious. And I feel like each game that's come after has just gotten lighter and lighter and kiddier and kiddier feeling. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And like much less. Yeah, see, I played. Intricate. Yeah. I beat five and it was fine that was the first one i really played played i went back and played i've got persona 4 golden on steam and it's much better oh yeah persona 4 is actually quite a bit better than five yeah i don't think five is by any means a bad game i think it's a really good game but i think comparison wise yes i think persona 4 is a better game for sure for sure another one i do want to mention from 2016 stardew valley Oh, you know, I don't. I, I I absolutely love that game. Never got around to playing it, honestly. Wasn't it kind of like a uh, Harvest Moon type thing? Very much a Harvest Moon type thing. It is. Just, it's really good. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's just really good. I mean, it's. I would take that over Animal Crossing every day of the week. Okay, fair enough. So, I, I yeah. might have to try that out then. <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and jet on to 2017 because I'm now at like 10% frame dropping. <laughs> oh, um, I'm recording, so when it gets put up later, it'll it'll be fine. We'll figure it out. So, <laughs> um, yeah, 2017. Uh, near, definitely. Near Automata, 100%, all the way. Fucking, this game challenged what I understood to be a game, not only in gameplay mechanics, um, the story, like it, it was constantly throwing weird, confusing things at you that made you like actually sit and kind of think about what you were doing. And I don't know, it's it it's a really hard game to describe, like without playing it through all the way. Um, fantastic shit, though. Fantastic. Uh, behind that, Danganronpa three. Fantastic. Uh, Yakuza Kiwami, which is kind of a cheating thing, but. But it, they they remade the game entirely, so it's kind of I can get away with that, right? No. Sure. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you, Cruz. Someone asked you. Fuck you and the I horse mean, you rode in on. I mean, you did, but you know. Oh shit. Well, yeah. So, anyone got any comments on 2017? Um. Yeah. 2017. Her. Horizon Zero Dawn came out. That was a pretty solid game. I just finished playing through that again uh, recently. I, and I don't know. I did not like Horizon Zero yeah, Dawn. I have mixed also, feelings uh, on it. Um, Odyssey. Oh. oh, true, true. Yeah, God, Nintendo somehow did not scrape me here. Weird. But um, no, yeah, I, I totally yeah, with, I, with Eddie on that one. Um, Horizon, it was, it was cool at first because of the whole bow mechanic being like your main like weapon and all that but i feel like i don't i don't know it just the story was so lame and cheesy and the fact that the final boss was literally just a boss that you'd already fought four times in the game with literally no change like it wasn't any harder and then the way it wraps up spoilers for people who haven't finished it i guess what are you doing um it basically like it everything that you would spent the game doing was completely undone at the end of the game and it's like okay we're just starting over the exact same idea like what what even what is that you were uh you were a blank all along uh, oh well, my so, goodness so what it is is this guy unleashed this bad shit and you reseal it and then he's just like ah fuck it i'll unleash it again and you're like why 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 didn't we just kill the guy i don't i don't understand i don't know it's just it was stupid stupid but yeah. it was fun for a little while, and I got to see uh, my lady curse quite a bit at that one. So, fantastic shit. Um, any big ones for 2017 other than that? Yeah, um, like I said, Super 
Mario Odyssey did come out, as did Breath of the Wild. Nintendo had a pretty good year that year. That's Again, true. neither of these games were amazing, but they were still pretty good and fairly fun to play. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Breath of the Wild always gets like thrown around as like the best game of the decade, and I think that's one of the games that inspired this discussion is that's going that's exactly yeah, what inspired I mean, this eh. discussion <laughs> literally while i was yeah, raging was going about it i was raging someone called it game yeah. of the decade and i was like nah fuck no like get real so yeah it, it's really hard to argue breath of the wild is that great it's really just everything zelda's been doing piled on top of far cry as I was saying earlier, it's not More doing less. anything new or special. Yeah. No. It's just Zelda. Yeah. Um, good one to mention here is Cuphead. Cuphead stands out as probably one of the most unique games I think anybody's ever released, to be honest. I, I, I mean, is it really that, unique yeah. though? It's it's literally a callback to old games, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's unique. It's Maybe Bullet if... Hell. It's a bullet hell in the sense of yeah, in in gameplay sense, but it's like you do not do that sort of art style. You don't have that. In, yeah, that okay. sl- sort of difficulty is hard. I, yeah, I it's fair. very much a combo that is not common. So, yeah. So it just it needs to be noted, and it was absolutely one of the most popular games too. Well received, well loved games. Another yeah. popular game. Game that came out that year was a uh, PUBG Player Unknown Battlegrounds. It's got fairly that popular around that true. time. Still is kind of popular. Uh, and Destiny Two came out, which again wasn't a big fan of, but people like it, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, PUBG is a big thing part of the rest of this decade. So yeah. yeah, I'm I'm real quick. Actually, I'm gonna stop the stream. I'm gonna keep the recording up so I can put the full thing up. But it's it's just continually getting worse, and I don't know why Spectrum has to be. Yeah, I'm noticing that. So goodbye, stream. This was fun. Bye, Twitch. <laughs> we tried. Twitch, more like bitch. Oh shit! Not making partner now. Stopping stream. Uh, nope. <laughs> Hey, shut up. Maybe one day. No, it's still going. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Fucking prick. God damn, it's taking forever to stop the stream. Well, all right, we'll just continue as we were. So, yeah, we were on, what, 2017 mm-hmm. still? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Hey, the stream stopped. All right, cool. We should see an impact. All right, we did it. Cool. Hopefully. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah. So 2017, interesting, interesting year. I think this is about the time I started noticing yeah. my lists were getting smaller. Yeah. Well, it starts yeah, getting to the definitely. point where it's like, oh, hey, we've already. <laughs> but it's also these are these are years that we start needing a lot more time to really understand. Yeah. Yeah. They're like much more. 2010. Games. We can look at the list. And go, oh yeah. Yeah. It's like looking at the games from 20. 20- then go oh yeah that one was huge then but died immediately that one was huge then and they got bigger later yeah exactly uh interesting shit man yeah i mean it's like kind of like um how like among us just like blew the fuck up but it's been out for two years you know yeah and the oddest thing still a little weird to me (laughs) It wasn't even like during like beginning of lockdown that I feel like it blew up. It it was a good like couple months in that it was just like suddenly yeah. boom. Yeah. yeah, lockdown. It was kind of like here's Fall Guys. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like La- Last of Us Two comes out. And it Animal has like this, yeah. Well, it's Animal Crossing right into the oh, lockdown. Yeah, yeah, Animal like, Crossing right was coming out as we were doing it. Yeah. And then and then it was Animal Crossing. Then all of a sudden for like two days it was. Last of Us 2, and then everybody's like, this is kind of garbage, and Fall Guys. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, Fall Guys is everywhere. And then all of a sudden, it's gone, and here's Among Us. <laughs> yeah, just like that. So, it's been a weird year for me. It's been a weird one. Been it's a, a lot of, weird, like... Weird year for everything. A lot of weird, like, yeah, I don't know, like, little, like, multiplayer, like, I don't know. This is this weird thing where I feel like the game quality is much lower than it should be, but like somehow it's these games still kind of huge. experience. Yeah, it's 
it's more about experiential things, which I think is a big deal now. That's fair. Rather than really the big single player massive story, and that just isn't as common. No. And we'll see that in the, like the next two years we have to deal with here. So, fuck all. So, 2018, we good to move on? Yeah. Cool. We're building a lot of hype, guys. We're getting really close here. We got three years left, and then the big winner for me and for Eddie, and no one cares about Jeremy. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Are you, are you including 2020 in that? <laughs> yes, I actually did include 2020. I feel like we're deep enough into the year. All right. And I don't think Cyberpunk's coming out this year, so. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Uh, okay. Yeah, so 2018. This is um, this is a little unprecedented. Uh, I guess it wasn't my favorite, but on one of my top three lists, I did have another game in this series. There, uh, it's gonna be Yakuza Six for 2018 for me. That game took everything that Yakuza did well and just made it prettier, made it more enjoyable to do. And it even taking place in the same city, the whole city felt very different. The, the gameplay was different because they introduced the, um, the new dragon system, I think it was called or whatever, the dragon engine, something like that. But, um, I honestly, for a game that was the sixth in the series that I've only played the first game out of that time at that time, fucking just blown away with that game absolutely just totally into it the story was so engaging it was so much less about the yakuza side of things and a lot more about kiryu's like personal life and like i i don't know about you guys but kiryu is of one of the coolest fucking characters out there easily yeah, that's awesome yeah so yeah. it definitely hit number one for me um runners up behind it was red dead redemption 2 fantastic game loved it um there's this whole mentality of even in like the gameplay of just take your time everything's slow that really fit that old western life and i thought that was such a nice it's touch just so amusing you didn't like yeah it's just so amusing you didn't like the first one that much but like this one so much it's, more i played in very different times in my life and i think that probably had a huge effect like maybe if i go back and play the original now i might be a little less against it but i don't know um, and then, of course, Monster Hunter World was followed up behind that. So, yeah, I, I can, I can definitely say I played a lot of Monster Hunter World. Um, yeah, I would say God of War was was pretty high up there for that year. The and I mean, like, I played all the other games. They were fun to play, but they're only really like worth the, the first playthrough. This God of War game, there, there's so much to do. There's so much. Uh, open world exploration but it's not open world too much you're going through the same area but it's like if you were in a different dimension and then there's you know all the different side stuff where you can get different weapons different armors things like that i thought it was a pretty good game so very pretty my favorite this year was was spider-man oh uh, basically. Say that next yeah that's no. fair at the time I made this list, I had not played that game yet because somebody was supposed to find it and let me borrow it. I keep for for some reason I keep thinking Jeremy has it. I, I don't sure know why. Don't I would love to play it. I mean, I'll gladly borrow it if you're willing to let me. Fuck that guy. Oh, yeah, really? right. You'll probably oh, get to play fun. it for. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. So, <laughs> um, shit. I forgot what I was gonna say. Holy shit. I you were talking about. Uh, uh, before spider-man uh god of war yeah so my take on god of war um probably the best god of war game however as a game as a whole i found it to be pretty generic too it felt like just like um like it felt like it was supposed to be a launch game almost like all the mechanics and stuff just feel like launch sony games so it it didn't really blow me away but um it was it was a pretty fun, cool game, and to be fair to it, I did only get maybe ten hours, not even like five hours or so into it. So maybe I'm missing where the real good meat is. But it just it just felt like, especially after all the hype, it just didn't really live up to the hype for me. 
but you know that's fair i mean i feel like that's the problem with all those games that end up in like the mainstream like that they get so much hype behind them and then you finally get to play and you're like well i mean at the end it's still a game made by people and you only have so much time same thing i played with another what you want i've already played this game like a hundred times with a different skin on it like is this dark siders like Mm. i don't don't know like Mm. it's just Mm. it felt a little weak (laughs) but it, it was a gorgeous game i'll give it a lot of credit for that and an interesting take on the character is very different from the uh, original games. He was less less angry, I feel like, and mm-hmm. just it was a cool like change of pace, I think, for the series. And I'm I wouldn't say it's a bad game uh, by any means. So that's what 2018 we're still talking about. Did I already go through my other yeah. Ones? The, the oh. only other games I really see on here, um, Super Smash. Smash Brothers Ultimate came out that year. Uh, they did the Shadow of Colossus um, remake. Which you know how I feel about that game. About, that's about it, I think. I mean, you know, there's always the uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out that year. Again, I haven't played Assassin's Creed since 3, and I probably won't. Odyssey is okay. Yeah. It's, it's the like first they time they added an RPG element onto it. And it's the first time the game kind of the game series I feel like actually shook up a little bit about what it was. I think. Or was that I, I think I talked about it a little bit but when I was Oh yeah. I know. I was talking about I talked a little bit about Odyssey last uh podcast, believe it or not, because I was yeah. playing it at the time. I do recall. Yeah. It was it was fine. It's nothing amazing, but it was it was fine. It's probably the best of the Assassin's Creed I've played since then, but that's not really saying much. Two is yeah. still the best. Yeah, the graphics yeah. are garbage, guaranteed. though. God, the graphics are so dated. <laughs> like max they, settings they on my don't computer. Hold up. It's no, the oh 12, god. Twelve years ago, man. Twelve years oh, makes a difference. It's crazy how Huge long difference. it's been. And I remember it looking so fucking good back then, and it's just like wow, ooh. Ugh. Ugh. Cool. So that that pretty much wraps up 2018, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Dead Cells was pretty fun, but it wasn't like one of those. Eh. Yeah, I think I think, I think a lot. Yeah, it's so close to now, but it's like nothing really stands out as still. Which is oh, fair. I need to return to that. Oh, I need to return to that. Yeah, that's fair. So. That's fair. Um, so we'll go on to 2019. 2019 god what i would kill to be in that mindset again uh, here we go. 2019 star wars jedi fallen motherfucking order god damn it the first game like that like tried to do like kind of that dark soulsy thing that i actually thoroughly enjoyed holy shit i have so much fun with this game uh just as a big star wars fan as a fan of um fucking god i forget the guy's name that they modeled him after and vo- he voiced and all that he basically was in the game he was um he's in shameless he played the joker in the gotham show oh, i can't think of his name right now because i'm a moron but fucking fantastic dude uh, that game honestly was probably the coolest star wars game to come out in a long long time and i i hope to see more of that from like what was that respawn the guys who did uh titanfall i want to say think so so i'm not great with developers so I that's, can't fair. Probably. that's fair but yeah that game is fucking awesome star wars jedi fallen order hands yes. down yes it is Look number right one now. 2019 for me uh 2019 was kind of a a weird year um following up actually a, a game we mentioned earlier my number two would be detroit become human by the same guys that did heavy rain I think they Such a good game. nailed the formula with Detroit. Nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Beyond yep. Two Souls was a fucking joke. Heavy Rain was really cool in concept, just really held back by the control scheme of anything. And Detroit, they just... Yeah. Everything came together fucking perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah. Um, it I just didn't... proved how great of a storytelling device that whole setup is. Right, yeah. Like, you can, I mean, as we knew with the Telltale, it's just it's the perfect storytelling setup for for video games. Yeah, and they they actually put in a really really good story as the key to this. So I don't know, it's good, fantastic. Um, 
my third one was uh, Bone Works because that game's fucking awesome, and I think it's what VR was made for. <laughs> and I only got through the training, so <laughs> yeah, Bone Works was fun. <laughs> Love that game. Uh, I'll definitely say my number one from last year, and that's what this is. Last year, last year was Untitled Goose Game. Oh, you know, I never Untitled got around Goose to game playing was, it, but it it did it's look... it's freaking adorable. I, I... It's fun. It's it's a me- it's an amazing game. I I was uh playing it with uh my brother in law Trevor while I was up in Michigan for Christmas of that year, and we we spent probably half of the time we were up there, which was about a week, playing that game, and it was just absolute ridiculous, just nonsense. So but I I loved every second of it's it. It's kind of in the same vein of like um Goat Simulator, right? Where it's just kind of wacky nonsense mm. i mean a different like no, perspective, no it's but it's it's, it's more like it, goal oriented it's an, than it's that it's basically a point click adventure game oh okay wow believe it or not it very much it's very much more like that than it is yeah it's not not goat simulator it's much more like a point and click adventure game in that sense okay fair enough how I good mean, was goat simulator I mean, you're not literally pointing clicking Oh, simulator was meh. It was fine. What? But it was more amusing than anything. Yeah, well, it's a fun little, but, like, yeah. co-op, like, dick-around game, I felt like. Yeah, that, that's what it is. That's purely. why I love that game. Love that game. game. I love that every now and then, you know? Just, just kind of forget it and yeah. fuck around. Notice how it yep. wasn't on, like, my top list anywhere, so. No, yeah, that not at good. all. Yeah. But, <laughs> but really cool. I will say that uh, 2019 did have the Resident an evil reboot which i still haven't played but i played the demo for and it looked pretty good I, oh, have either that... of you guys played it reboot? the one where it's actually like more horrible or horrible more horror are you talking about seven or uh, or the uh, remake of two this is resident evil 2. remake of two. Oh was yeah that not one that was the horror one no that that yeah that was more around the uh the beginning like zombie stuff um, I think seven was where they really started to bring the horror back, but I think the remake of two is probably one of the like, if not the best remake I've ever seen of a game because it's so faithful to the original, but like at the same time being just like it's its own thing. And I I don't know, it's really good. And I'm surprised I didn't rake in higher. Maybe I didn't realize it came out last year, even though I bought it like a week after it came out. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that that game was really good, um, and it really hit the the right thing of atmosphere and mood without relying on like just jump scares and shit. Um, really, really good game. If you're into like the horror scene and like the original game especially, that I highly recommend that shit. Highly. But yeah, that's that's about all I got to say on that. Good good mention. Thank you for bringing that one in. Yeah, man. Anything else for that year, guys? No. No. <laughs> you got it. I mean, I'll go ahead and just say uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 did come out again. That was kind of disappointing. There was a lot <laughs> yeah. of levels that just seemed kind of uh, underwhelming, especially the Monsters, Inc. level, which oh was by far the most disappointing. You have all these fucking doors. You mean to tell me I'm going to stay in the fucking factory? Get entire, real, guys. The entire level. The entire level. So the, what I stand by is they put so much work into those first three worlds, and then after that they're like, we just need to get this fucking game out. Just get this fucking game out and just pfft, right through the rest of it. Because mm-hmm. I did notice the first three worlds had a lot of good detail into it, and then after that nothing came close like to – and it's a shame because there were a lot of cool properties that they were using for it. And I, I'm still upset mm-hmm. that there were zero, zero Final Fantasy characters in the whole game. Other than like a silhouette mentioning them sort of like other friends or some shit. And that was it. And I was like, but yeah, and then they kind of just show like Cloud's hair or whatever. And they're saving it for DLC. Yeah, which I I think they said the Remind, whatever, whatever the new DLC for it was, had some, but it was still not up to snuff. But you finally got to play as Kyrie, so, you know, I'm pretty excited about that. I haven't got it yet, but... Did you? I mean, I'm going to be honest. Was that like a DLC thing? Yeah, yeah, it was a total DLC thing. It literally... 
it's from what it's described to me as is you're just replaying the end of the game with a slightly different thing and you get to play as Kyrie. That's about all I know. So mm. <laughs> Yeah, kind of under It's about time. I mean like Right? Yeah. Well, 15 games later, you know. But from Right. What I'm... Finally you get a female character and who's been around since the first one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You finally get to play as her, which is what I've been expecting since too, but you know, fuck me, right? Um, though I do, I just, I just can't be bothered to like, want to go back to the game because of that. And they, they said like, this is the biggest problem I've had since the first game is they kind of like hinted at like Kyrie and Sora and then kept them apart for 400 years. And then when they're finally back together, Oh, we're back together. Oh, now we're separated again. And like, I come, guys, can we, yeah, like, no, can like, we do guys, something uh, with them? Like, like, I know can we have, a, can we enjoy this reunion? I, I don't think they actually want to have them hook up. I know I it's don't, like honestly, still technically it. like a children's thing, but they were like teen, weren't they? Like the second game was. Yeah, the, well, by now they've got to be teen, they're, late they're gotta teenagers, have teens, if not like into their twenties. I don't know if they're twenties, but like, Japan, so who knows? But uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I just there's there's a lot of just like i for everything the way they kind of like gave you 40 hours of exposition at the end of three that kind of wrapped up and mostly solved the convoluted shit which actually kind of left me feeling satisfied surprisingly even though it was like like i said 40 hours of cutscene. uh it just there was so many things just left <laughs> like that like i don't i don't know it just ah, it's weird it's very weird so we'll see what they do in the future Maybe maybe they'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, another pretty good mention. I'm honestly surprised you haven't mentioned it, Sora. But uh, the Outer Worlds came out that year, and I do remember a lot of people, including it yourself, if I remember correctly, were playing it and into it for a little bit. Yeah. So I'm very mixed on that game. Um, a lot of great concepts, but I feel. It's exactly why I don't like New Vegas as much as everyone else did. It just feels like there's a lot of things in it that feel extra and pointless, but also it just feels kind of phoned in. The characters are lame. Um, I just... It left a lot to be desired from everyone going, oh my god, it's the guys that did the best Fallout! And it's like, well, for yourself, it's not the best Fallout, so you can take your titties and put them away, okay? Like, I just... I had so much expectations and I waited to buy that game for that reason. And my friends got through and were hyping it up. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll, I'll give it a go. And I had fun with it, but I maybe played 10 hours before I just got bored of it. Like, I, I like the concepts. I just feel the execution was very lacking. Um, and it was just too caricature-y in a lot of ways like the whole game was um i don't know i was i was pretty let down by it not destiny level let down but i i got it too hyped in my mind so yeah okay yeah yeah um i do have a question for you guys because yeah. this one was a pretty big one at, at the time but um I know we were waiting for it for a while, and I, it came out, and then I just kind of never really heard much about it. So, have any of you guys played Death Stranding? I have not yet. Um, I feel like Death Stranding, from what I've read and what I've seen, I feel like to an extent I will enjoy the game. Um, it's very a Hideo Kojima kind of game where it's very all over the fucking place but then kind of gets to a point of logic by the end i'm not really sure how else to describe that but and i i i don't know it's basically walking simulator and i feel like there's like a whole like multiplayer aspect in terms of like you can like people build bridges that'll show up in your world and you can use that to get places easier and i feel like now is the time where like that stuff's not going to exist. Nobody's going to be playing anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, I'm sick. 
I am goddamn sick and tired of brands being in my video games. This is like literally advertising in video games. Him crushing monsters? Get this shit out of here. Cup Ramen in my fucking Final Fantasy, which that game sucked anyway, so whatever. Get that shit out of here. I don't need real world fucking brands in my video games. I don't need it. One, it breaks the immersion. Two, again, it's a fucking ad. That's all that is. That's an advertisement. <laughs> I don't need that. I don't. I, I remember there was a game on the original PlayStation 1. It was a racing game. It was kind of like F-Zero, but it was on the PlayStation. And every loading screen was just a Red Bull ad. Jesus. And this was before Red Bull even became Red Bull. This was, you know, this was like 97. So, so this game basically single-handedly so, brought Red Bull to the mass mainstream, is what you're telling me. Okay. <laughs> No, it was not that fucking popular of a game. <laughs> I don't even remember what it was, to be fucking honest. I just that's, remember it was garbage. That's funny. It was a racing, like a weird floating racing thing. And every loading screen was Red Bull. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> okay, but I do, I do have to mention advertising in video games done right, and that's fucking Burger King Sneak King, bro. That's that's all I got to say on that. That that they, they did good on that. Are one. you sure not the Pepsi Man game? The Pepsi Man. I never even heard uh, of Pepsi Man game. What? I'll to link you that later. It's Please do. I, I yeah, like... in the There's. Chat. I was gonna say I'm gonna have to take you guys through the advertising and video <laughs> game stuff later. Yeah, but for sure that'd be a great topic. So we're gonna we're gonna get to 2020 and then wrap up with our big deals. Uh, let's let's fucking yeah, do it. Yeah. 2020, sure. a year we all fucking hate. A year that's still, you know, we're we're about. We're, we're about halfway, uh, about three quarters down the we're shaft. Definitely. We're we're not quite to the balls yet. We're not balls deep into 2020, but I think it's it's deep enough that I can make a fair pick. Um, I, I'll let you guys guess this one. Actually, I, I have a feeling you guys may get this, but there were two two really big games this year for me that I want to see what you guys think. I ended up choosing random Yakuza game number. 27. Nope. <laughs> nope, we did not get a new Yakuza game. Or, oh, or, well, or technically or, three, four, five. Or, or obviously, yeah. Yeah. Or obviously Animal Crossing. See, yeah, that. And I, I thought Animal Crossing, but I was thinking Ghosts of Tsushima, probably. God damn it, Cruz, you fucking nailed it. That is my pick for 2020 game of the year is Ghosts of Tsushima, okay? Yes, it had some of the the overdone open world aspects, but they were so well handled and like throughout the entire game, I never felt inconvenienced by anything in the game. Like it always felt like like an enjoyable thing to do, even if I died in battle or, you know, fucked up, like I knew what I did wrong and I was like, wow, that was still a fun battle. And even as I'm maxing out my stats, I'm still finding challenge in these battles. Not cheapness, mind you. No, no, no. Real challenge that, like, I actually have to approach it with, like, a good thought and switch between my stances and everything. And honestly, just uh, just blown away across the board. Fantastic story. Very, very uh, fucking... I just I can't say enough about this game. I really can't. If you haven't played it yet, highly recommend it. The only downside is it is kind of a long game. You're getting about 40 to 60 hours, and an action game kind of feels long, which, yeah, I know. I'm bitching about a game being too long. What a fucking baby. But I just love the game. Really do. Um, obvious runner-up, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Great game. Met my expectations. Fuck that last hour, though. We didn't need that last hour. We yeah, we, we didn't need it. I won't yeah. get into details because Jeremy yeah, he, hasn't played it, but that last well, hour was it. totally unnecessary, pointless. Yeah, we've discussed that one. Yeah, I was that live long. chatting you as I was watching it, like going through that part. So yeah, yeah. yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had at least three other friends live chat me that last hour bitching the whole time. <laughs> Because they were like, the entire time, they'd start with the first part, and they'd be like, oh, this is amazing, oh my god, yeah. this is everything I wanted it to be. Yeah. And then I'd be like, alright, just hold on, when just you get to that wait. last hour, and then the last hour hits, and Mother every single fuck. one of them switch goes, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Fucking Nomura. So. Fucking Nomura, get your shit out All of right. here. Alright, you ready? 
I'm going to pull out the biggest 2020 game. Oh, period. real quick before you, you do that. Real quick before you do that, though. I did want to do an honorable mention. It was my number three. I've only played a little bit of this game and haven't got into the depth of it. But Dreams. Dreams is one of the coolest fucking things I've seen in a while. Never even heard of it. Are you serious? It's, I believe, Sony exclusive because it's made by the guys that made Little Big Planet. But it's um, at the core of it. It's a game creation engine. I mean, I've seen so many things recreated, new things created in it. And every time I see something new from that game, it blows me away with what it lets you do and that you don't need to be a programmer to do these things. So I definitely recommend trying out the demo and experiencing some of the games. There's like three or four that they let you play. Uh, that oh, big ones. I but do know this one now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It really flew under the radar. I feel like, like it was big when it was first announced, like a lot of people were chatting about it, but then when it hit, it just, I didn't hear anything more. And I don't know. It's really, really cool. Game. It's been a weird year. That's yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, okay. Now go ahead. Man. Yeah. I, I've said my piece. <laughs> okay. So, this is a huge game. This is going. This is a game that it's been 14 years since the previous game in the series, and is probably one of the biggest games made by this developer ever. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I'm not even. I'm not even joking about that. No, it is no, I'm huge. I'm I'm behind you though, like. If I had the graphics power and the the whole setup, I would be so into that. It looks incredible, honestly. I'm it, it is incredible looking. The fact that you can literally go the entire world and the fact that's all all streamed constantly to you so there's constant updates to lighting conditions, wet weather conditions, etc. There are people who fly into the hurricanes. That Granted, that's the wind crazy. Winds have some issues with uh, updating, so it's weird when you get to the eye of the hurricane. It's only three three miles an hour, but <laughs> still, I mean, it's, nonetheless, it's, it's cool. very amusing. It's a really cool thing that I would like to see more use of. Like I, I remember talking with Jeremy before about uh, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was talking about doing a video game type thing where basically you could control like something to explore the universe or something and like it was like actually like based on and like connected with reality like actual you know yeah. our universe and you know it's that that kind of concept of bringing the reality into the video game in the right way you know yeah it's cool i'm for it you heard it here officially that's my stance microsoft flight simulator i'm for it all right, what a, what a huge thing. Uh, Jeremy, your 2020 game. <laughs> Man, I'm going to be honest. 2020 has been such a shitty year <laughs> that there aren't a lot of new games that I've gotten to try. I've gotten a lot of the games where people are like, hey, man, I beat this game finally. You want to go ahead and borrow it? Yeah. And so I've got a stock of, of games sitting on my desk right now yeah. that are like, Games that have come out in the last couple of years, last two, three years that I still have to go through. Um, I I can't say that there's been anything that's come out this year that's particularly over the top for me. I am kind of curious on uh, the new Half-Life game. Ooh, and yeah, uh, looks good, I, I do like the Doom games. I, I always liked the old Doom games. I kind of want to play the, the new one, yeah, Doom Eternal. Yeah. But, I've never played any of the newer like 3D like well I guess they were always 3D but that's the whole thing. Uh, yeah, but like the but, the like newer ones since <laughs> they started making them again. I haven't got around to playing. I've seen since it. 2016. Yeah. It's weird. It feels very much. It reminds me of um. Oh, what's that called? Ah, fuck. Was that a multiplayer shooter we used to play a fuck ton of where you're like super fast? Unreal Tournament. Uh, Unreal Tournament. It reminds me a lot of the oh physics God. of Unreal Tournament, and I'm just I'm not I'm not into that right now. I just loose. loose, loose. Yeah, very loose, quick yeah. pace, like which is cool. Don't get me wrong. And maybe once I actually sit down and play it, I'll enjoy it. But just not super appealing for me right now. I really hate it. It's kind of like that, but mm. yeah, yeah, that's true. I've been noticing that replaying them with the Master Chief collection. So yeah, but yeah. All right. Good mentions. So we ready for a uh, game of the decade? 
So I'll give you my top ten list. Oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna like. do that. That's right. I, I yeah, because I didn't, I didn't break it down by year because I think I got confused. I think we were really sure how we we're gonna do this. No, that's fine. That's how so I wanted to I'll do it. I'll give you my top. Different. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give you my top ten if you'd like. Yeah, go for it, please. So number ten, I went with. He- yep. Yeah. Number ten was Heavy Rain. Okay. I. Fe- uh, we already discussed that. Yep, absolutely. Number nine, I went with Overwatch. Overwatch yep. was a okay. big one. Definitely a good choice. And a lot of this, a lot of this is about, a lot of this is about like impact. overall impact as yeah. much as anything else. Right. Uh, number eight, I went with Far Cry Three. Okay. Yeah. Number, yeah. Number seven was Undertale. Mm-hmm. Number six, Pokemon Go. So we've all mentioned all these games. Yeah. Uh, number five. Number five, I did PUBG slash Fortnite. I just okay. think same it's thing. Stupid huge. Yeah. 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 Might as well be. Same thing. No. Number four. Yeah. Number four, as we discussed earlier, Dark Souls. The Dark Souls of video games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's quite literally Dark Souls, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, number three, GTA five. Okay. Uh, number two, number two, I said was Skyrim. Yeah. Yep. I knew this was going to be so, number one for you. I knew it. It, it, it's a really obvious one. Get a drum roll going here. So my number one, because it, it, oh my God, pretty I much came that. out in 2011 was Minecraft. Woo, baby. Minecraft. <laughs> Woo. We got Smash Brothers. We got Steve. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> Probably destroyed a microphone. How insane is that, by the way? Uh, it's, yeah. yeah. How insane is that? Um, have that freaking Minecraft Steve is in Smash Brothers. Super That's weird. Still, still weird. very weird. Yeah, it's, it's very weird. But now all the week, I think the last thing I was watching before I got on here was 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 uh, one of my a Smash Brothers streamer playing Steve and just being absolutely toxic with uh. him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's i mean it's hard to argue minecraft is a the biggest selling video game of all time like it surpassed tetris at this point it is insanely huge and i've literally it's never... a game that's lasted yeah I've, I've never met a person who's played it and didn't enjoy it on some level yeah, there's something. Everybody has always said, well, yeah, I've tried Minecraft. It's it's Minecraft. It's like talking about the old Mario Brothers game, Super Mario, or as I said, Tetris. Right. It's very much on the pantheon. This is like, this is a game that's going to just last forever. Right. And, you know, and it's, it, and I talked about this too earlier beforehand, is there's so many of these precedents it's set. It's the first really early access game. Yep. Like the first time anybody's ever bought a game while it was in development, they sold a game while it was in development to build the hype. And right now, that's I think half the games I've bought in the last five years have been early access. Only half. Yeah. yeah. It's become... it's like everything that's come out in the last like yeah. four or five. And years. I know a lot of these people use it as excuses to you know just release the game, get their money real quick, and then eventually, hopefully. But you know. Yeah, I mean, but think about it. Like a lot of the design principles for ha- for so many of the games we've mentioned, especially latter half of the decade, you know, that's what they started as. You know, yeah. I Fortnite was like no that. No Man's Sky. <laughs> yeah, No Man's yeah, no Sky, Man's Sky is, is very much the exam the example. Yeah, an yeah. uh, example of somebody who did it well, even though it, and it wasn't sold as an early access that, and that's the biggest thing of these games sony fucking really pumped it up more than they should have and i think that's what yeah, really yeah. fucked it up yeah i pre-ordered that game yeah. that's probably the last game yeah. i ever pre-ordered nice yeah i can but see that it's really hard for me to argue against minecraft just number one game period okay it's- it's just got such an impact on everything. So. Well, oh, well, Mojang, there you go. There's, there's our, our support. So you know, you know fuck Microsoft. Cool, thanks, I appreciate it. Fuck Microsoft. <laughs> See, we're not gonna sponsorship now. Sorry, buddy. Fuck Microsoft. Okay. No, well, I don't think I got it. 
I'd say uh, on my PC running Microsoft Windows, you know, but yeah. Who isn't? Um, <laughs> Losers with Max. All right. <laughs> All right, you ready for mine? Hippie. Yeah. You ready for this? Yep. All right, this yep. took a lot of deliberation. I've been thinking about this since we literally had the original talks about putting these lists together. And I, I honestly just like while we were talking about Minecraft came to my decision finally. So um, there's a lot of good contenders, a couple not so great contenders for a decade, but I'm going to have to say for me personally, it's, it's near automata is my game of the decade because of just how different. Uh, I, I mean, it's just, it was such a different thing. Like it was more an experience than just a game. And I had never played anything like that before that. And I haven't played anything like that since. Um, I just, I, I don't know, man. It, it really blew me away in so many ways. So many. It, this is mainly because mainly from 2B. No, I don't even like 2B that much. It's all about A2, bro. You know me. I like the long hair, okay? <laughs> though, though, <laughs> infuriatingly, when you do get to play A2, which is the shortest person you get to play as, which kind of made me sad, she does cut her hair short for the part you play as her. So that was kind of like, mm, okay. Still Specifically still. designed to piss you off. <laughs> yeah, right, basically. Um, and it, despite my absolute hatred for 9S, which I hear a thousand fangirls just fucking screaming right now, but it's still, I still just blown away by everything about that game. Um, even though, yes, some of the textures were meh, um, Platinum Games did the most incredible, like, combat system, in my opinion. Like, I just, it felt so good. Like, you usually when you have a flowy combat system, it kind of feels like you're disconnected or... There's just something unfun about it, but it just... Mm -hmm. Honestly, I could just play that game for forever. Straight. Forever. Forever. So that's it. That's my pick. Nier Automata. Game of the decade for me. And I guess for, for me, again, I, I don't unfortunately have constant money coming in to try all the new games that have come out. And a lot of them haven't really impressed me as much as i would like but uh i i guess i would say for me uh it's it's, it's pretty up there between uh, borderlands 2 and uh dying light okay yeah i can uh, see that i mean those are both really good games yeah i mean you're wrong it's near but yeah i could see that <laughs> i mean i've still never played near so Fucking let me borrow it or some shit. It's sitting oh, in wait. your brother's room. Are you Probably kidding me? Probably bought it digitally, didn't you? No, Is you. It? It's actually no. It's your sister's room. I think it's one of your siblings' rooms. One of them have it. Well, it can't get it straight. That that was back before I started um, really buying digital. And mostly digital games I buy are usually multiplayer or something that I know me and M will both want to play. And it's only been recently since really COVID hit that I've started really hamming more into digital because I just, I don't want to go out in the fucking infested world. Are you kidding me? Who wants to do that? Fuck. You're telling the, you're telling the boy with the Steam. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, <laughs> that's part of it too is Steam has made me much more accepting of that. So, I don't know. But yeah, I have that physical. Okay, I'll... Yeah. I'll be over here with my another 25,000 hours in Minecraft, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's just this week, right? Because, you know, there's 25,000 yeah. hours in a week. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I wish you guys could see the Gosh. screen right now. I'm being exceptionally obnoxious with Nier. <laughs> it's great. Because I did, like, images for every single game of the year and stuff, and I'm just, it's Nier, baby. Here, game of the decade, greatest of all time. To be bent over <laughs> something, yeah. No, I mean I should, but you know this is for kids. We don't, we don't fucking, we don't do weird shit and fucking talk about sex and shit. This is for kids. You know what I'm fucking saying? So. This is for fucking kids. Shut the fuck, fuck up, you cunt. <laughs> is cunt like a word that Twitch would be mad about? I mean I'm not streaming, so we're probably Maybe. good, but. Yeah, let's not use it anyway. Cunt. 
All right. I'll, when when I upload this part, I'll just I'll blank it. It's fine. Yeah. There you go. Maybe. It's still all about that near baby. All right. Cool. So um, yeah, that was a good thorough discussion. I think we killed uh damn near two hours on that. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Pretty easily, we could have we and we could have extended it a lot more. Yeah, I did kind of yeah. start rushing us around 2016, 17, and then chilled back. I cause... I blame well, I blame uh, Jeremy for not being prepared. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. I I was okay. Shut up. Yeah. All right. All right. I, I, to be fair, <laughs> he was not prepared by design. Even though I did kind of slip up to him, but. That was kind of our original thing, like, all right, don't tell him he's going to pick Breath of the Wild. He's going to pick Breath of the Wild, which he didn't, and that was good. I'm glad. And again, like, it was an okay game, but it wasn't It wasn't a 10 out of 10 best game of the year, let alone decade. Like, yeah. I, I, again, I like Zelda, but it, it wasn't this, like, oh, my God, no game has ever been this. It's like, okay, it was, it was pretty. It was kind of fun I, I still haven't eaten it i mean i've all but beaten it i just gotta go kill ganon but it impacted it yeah. better anyway <laughs> yeah cool so that was that was that good was guys uh good spyware. Shit. <laughs> spyware what what Keep what about going. okay <laughs> sorry my loud uh, mouth <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it later all right <laughs> All right, this feels dangerous. Cool. So, um, anyone got any like final thoughts before we uh wrap up here? Damn. I, I guess not. No, I mean we we kind of left it all on the table there. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. That that was the reason. Um. No. Cool. Mine is uh. Mine is uh. Fuck Konami and mm, yes. A do you win? Uh, Chronicles is coming up soon. 2022 Kickstarter original makers of speaking in uh, one and two. Yeah, I'm looking forward I'm to that. You showed me that trailer. It looks fucking awesome. I'm so ready for that. I'm, I've been dying good. for a good and pixel look, art o- o- RPG. And if it's Suikoden yeah, guys it's, behind it's it. Yeah, it's everything Octo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything. It's everything Octopath, Octopath, Octopath Traveler promised. Everything Octopath Traveler should have been combined with the people who made Suikoden. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can't say can't, no. Can't argue with that. <laughs> can't say no. It's gonna be good. Uh, I just got a couple plugs real quick. Um, I do have uh this series I've been doing now. It's called Classic Struggle. I struggle to play classic games. Um, I streamed yesterday, and I have it uploaded to YouTube now as well, and it's still sitting on my Twitch past broadcast. If you want to check it out, um, I played. Uh, Super Mario 2 Yoshi's Island I think is the full title uh, for the first time ever that game was uh, it was it was difficult by like you know the fourth space because I suck at platforming you know but I had I had some fun with it I was say that that's your issue <laughs> yeah I just I don't I don't do good at platforming so what I did instead about half half hour in I switched over to Super Mario RPG which I had immensely more fun with because, of course, I love RPGs and there's no fucking platforming, Um, which really surprised me. Um, (laughs) It's Square that made it, so it makes sense, but it's a really, like, really, like, legitimate RPG. I was surprised to find. The numbers, I don't know who made the the numbers. They're a little weird when I can do, like, 36 damage to one guy and then 8 the other, but maybe, maybe as I get further, I'll figure out the weakness system and that's all it just came down to. It just felt really weird at the beginning when I was limited to just Mario punching and no other characters or weapons yet that I was like, that's a real drastic difference between enemies. Okay, whatever. But so that'll be cool. I'll probably be streaming that again the next day or two. If anyone wants to catch it live, I'll actually give people a heads up. Uh, other than that, I've got a big, big project in the works involving both these guys and a lot of other people. I won't go into too much detail about, but um, I've, I'm have i really excited about it. It's in the planning stages, and I've got a little bit done for it, and it's, it's going to be awesome, guys. So look forward to that. Um, I think that's... Real, real quick. Why don't yeah. you go, go ahead and uh, put a shout out to your, your what your actual Twitch streaming account and your YouTube page actually is so that people yeah. can get there. 
I mean, people are probably only going to be seeing these on one or the other. In fact, this part specifically is only going to be on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it's um, let me double check so yeah. I make sure I get this right. But it's Infinite Sora with two A's for Twitch. And I think it's the same for YouTube. I'm double checking now. Um, but that's kind of my moniker. It's just, oh, it's it's under Infinite Sky Recordings is where I'm doing most of the postings on YouTube. So I'll just like Google or, you know, search that in YouTube, Infinite Sky Recordings, and you'll see all that. Um, but you're probably already on YouTube if you're hearing this part anyway, so. But now yeah. you know how to get to the Twitch, so there you go. Yeah, you're welcome. yeah, add Infinite Sora with two A's at the end. So, yeah, if you want to check out the Twitch stream and you're a YouTube guy. Um, yeah, or or gal. I'm sorry, that was sexist and wrong. I apologize. Um, so yeah, once again, uh, game of the decade. Guy is gender neutral. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's how I use it. Like I call everyone my guy, but I'm an asshole, so who knows? All right. Um. So yeah, I guess that that pretty much wraps it up. Obviously, no after show since this was fucking ginormous. Um. Well, and hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Hopefully we'll not drop 13% of my frames. Fucking Spectrum. Yeah, yeah, Spectrum, get good. Yeah, get good. <laughs>